everybody, welcome back to the channel, nice to see you again. Today we're talking filtration, specifically sumps. I'm going to make a sump. Now, I'm making a sump for Mega Tank, but this could apply to any fish tank really. A sump is just somewhere to stick media equipment, get things out of the main tank. They're fantastic, I, I love them, I think they're great. Um, specifically, they add to the volume of the water, they add to... Um, the filtration capacity, they're usually bigger than canisters, bigger than sponges, bigger than bigger than most normal things. Now, I won't go into all the benefits, I'll maybe make a dedicated sump video here, but basically we're going to create a box that can hold filter media. That's it. Size it up appropriately for the tank that you want, but that's what we're doing. And because of the great success I've had with Mega Tank, I'm going to make it out of wood. I've got everything I need, I've got my tape measure, my pencil, safety squints and a power tool. Let's go. So that's all the panels of wood. We've got two side panels, two end panels, and one base panel. And if you saw me cut all that, you're probably thinking to yourself, it's a good job you watch an IT. I'll never make a carpenter. Next we'll just be take all of these, screwing and gluing basically. We're gonna make a basic box, get that to together, and then we'll put in some baffles, or I'll talk about what my design element of this is going to be. Okay, so now we have a box. I'm not going to teach you how to make a box. There's probably better ways and easier ways to make a box. My general requirements are all the glue in all the seams is squished out enough to make me think that we've got good seals. I'm going to waterproof it, obviously, but that's good enough. So, box done. The next thing is designing the sump, and designing's a bit fancy for what we're actually doing. I just want to figure out what way I want to make the water flow, so I'm going to make some baffles. So baffles are just a fancy way of saying blockers, so bits of wood that force the water to go up or under to make its way through to the return pump. So water goes in one end, comes out the other end. So as basic as that. Normally you would have something like filter socks, filter floss, that kind of thing, collecting the water as it comes in to grab the bigger particles. It's a more mechanical to catch the finer, bigger particles, and then biological, chemical, and back out again. I'm going to go a bit different, I'm going to go a fairly large first chamber and not put anything in it, just have it as a settlement chamber. So when the stuff comes in here, I can get my shop back in there and just hoover out the crud every now and again. So that's the general plan for that. And maybe it's a bit easier if I show you this, I don't know if you can see that. If you can't, I shall put this on screen somehow. But basically, settlement chamber where the water comes in, a baffle to force the water over and under. This will be quite thin. Then some mechanical here, so some sponges and stuff like that, some jap mat in there to catch it. And then an over, under, over for some bio media, and then the return section for the return pump and the heaters and things like that. That's the general plan. What I need to do now is cut my baffles and waterproof them, because if you imagine this is a baffle, if I put that in place, and it's going to be very hard to waterproof the underside, so I want to coat and waterproof my baffles now. I'm going to do um, the liquid rubber because it was so popular with everyone before, but it should be fine on something this size. Let the glue set, um, get the baffles waterproofed, and then we can work on waterproofing everything properly. But that might be a job for tomorrow, so we'll come back then. 
right, had a bit of a brainwave. Forget all that nonsense about the baffles. I thought, I'll give it a kiss. So I'm currently filling it, the hose from here. It's never going to get any more full than it is now, so it's more of a leak test than anything else. I've used a pond liner, so I had this bit of pond liner sitting about from previous projects unused. I can get this all neatly folded in and everything, so it's a bit rough at the moment. But if this passes the leak test, I might just leave it like that and just use sponge and jack matting to separate the sections that I want. It's going to be more than enough for what I need. Uh, maybe I can refine it in future or find a second-hand actual sump or even additional things. So I've been thinking about things like packy filters and all that kind of stuff. But for my purposes for this, cheap because I'm reusing things I already own. Quick, just have to throw it in. I don't have to paint multiple, multiple layers of rubber and it should work. So I'm going to leave this for a bit, see if it holds water as I expect it will. Fold it in, get it all neat, get some media in it and swap it over. Right, oh, we've got the sump. It's pretty much ready. Um, I don't know how many times I've said this now, but I'll say it again and edit it out later if I remember. Settlement chamber, this big section here, the pipes from the overflows are going to go into here and it's going to just let everything settle in here. I've then got these walls made out of, just made out of jack matting. They're held in place very lightly with sponges either side just to keep them a little bit taut, but they're just for separation. I really like the jack matting because I can take this out and I can jet wash it. It's no waste. It's great stuff. Settlement chamber, bit of mechanical, biological, another little bit of mechanical pump and at the end that returns back to the tank. For media, I'm going with my old favourites. I've got a bunch of Biohome, I've got a bunch of Alpha Grog, more Biohome, more different types of Biohome, Bio Bricks. I've got a couple of these Bio Bricks in here. Half of it, the seeded stuff that I've already been using and I'm just adding a bunch of extra. But I've also got some extra extras. So I was sent a bit of a care package from one of my subscribers, a fellow hobbyist who's trying to get started selling a few things online. So he sent me a few things just to look at. Uh, and their filter media is one of them. I'll do a bit more of a, a look through maybe on the live stream or something. Check out the live streams Friday night, 9 p.m. of all the other things that he sent me. But basically these are more biological filters media and um, these ones are called Tetris, TDM Tetris. So I'm a big fan of how they come in their own filter bag, that's quite nice. But yeah, these are just random shapes with loads of knobbly bits and grooves. I'm a big fan of Biohome, but it does a great job, but it is very expensive. So this is going to be a lot cheaper. Um, I will put some links down in the description or maybe in future videos once he gets his Amazon shop up and running and you can go and try this stuff yourself. So I haven't tried it yet, I'm just going to chuck it in there and use it. I'll give it a bit of a rinse first. We've got this one, then we've got a smaller version, which is these smaller, they almost look like Cheerios. So different sizes for different filters, I guess. So with that, we've got a ton of biological media plenty of mechanical media. I don't really use chemical media, so I mean I might if I was trying to do something specific like remove meds or something like that, but no. Happy with mechanical, happy with my biological. And remember, mechanical also does biological, so bacteria will live in there. And if you're new here and you don't know what the hell's going on, this is <laughs> filtration happens in your... Filtration happens in your filter? Mm. This is all about colonizing bacteria that can eat up the nasties. These bad boys are pooping out 24-7. Um, so you grow your bacteria, ideally in your filter or your sump or whatever. It lives in all the tiny crevices within your filter media, like your little um, cracks and holes, uh, and eats up all the ammonia, turns it into nitrate, essentially. So we've got scope for plenty of media in here, tons more than there was in there already, and there's still going to be tons more space. So I'm going to get this filled up, put back in place and back up and running. Just wanted to take a pause in the video to talk about this week's sponsor. Me, I'm sponsoring my own videos. No one else will have to do it. If you live in the UK and you're after some good quality fish food at reasonable prices, go to aquariumadventures.co.uk. All the foods that I use in my fish room that feed my own fish, you can buy it and you can buy some merch. You can help support a small channel with increasingly insane energy prices to pay for. Um, thank you very much. Back to the video. So I've got rid of the, the idea of the baffles and replaced them with this just straight through flow. Um, obviously because I've planned this thoroughly and I'm not just doing it on the fly. 
But I do still have them, so if this doesn't cut the mustard for me, if I find that I'm getting dead spots in there, if the, the water tests say that it's not and going through all the ammonia quickly enough, then I can I can retrofit that, I can add it in. Let's use the same premise uh, and get the water flowing through the media more efficiently. As I said before, there's no such thing as a bad sump design. There's only an inefficient one. I mean, there is a bad one if it's not got the capacity to handle the flood. I should just stop talking there. No such thing as a bad design for filtration within a sump. Obviously, if you hang it together with coat hangers and plastic bands, it's not going to do a very good job and might explode. That would be bad design. So that's it. Everything's in and running under the sump. Um, one last job to do. I need to put the heaters in. So I was a little bit worried that the heaters might melt the pond liner. So I've printed off this little bracket that just holds them off the bottom a little bit. Hopefully that'll do the job. But not much to show you because it's all tucked away underneath, but it's doing the job. It's functioning silently. Happy with it. All I have to do now is keep monitoring the water quality, as you would do anyway, just making sure that everything's doing what it's meant to be doing. But hopefully, Mega Tank is functioning properly now. I've started to add a few extra bits, like facing off this and get painted up and make it look nice eventually. I've added some decorations, some wooden things into the tank just to give the giant snakehead a place to hide. He likes to have a little bit of cover, it seems starting to feed properly now um, yeah everything seems to be going well happy times mm -hmm.